The Grampians mountain range rises proudly from the plains of western Victoria, a labyrinth of rugged peaks, sheer sandstone cliffs, and sweeping vistas. These mountains hold a story over 400 million years in the making, a tale written into the very rocks under our feet. In this video we'll journey through deep time to unravel how the Grampians were formed, from humble sand grains in ancient rivers and deserts, to a mighty range of tilted strata thrust up by tectonic fury, and finally sculpted by eons of wind and water into the landscapes we marvel at today. Our journey begins in the Silurian period, roughly 430 to 420 million years ago, long before any dinosaurs, in fact before even the first forests had spread across the land. At that time, the region that is now Victoria looked utterly alien. To the west, older mountains, raised during even earlier tectonic events, were slowly eroding under rain and wind, shedding vast quantities of sand and mud. These sediments were carried by rivers and streams into low-lying basins and coastal plains. Over millions of years, layer upon layer of sandstone, siltstone, mudstone and even some conglomerate accumulated in what geologists call the Grampians Group. Importantly, this was largely a non-marine environment, an ancient landscape of river deltas, alluvial plains, and perhaps occasional shallow lakes or windblown dunes. Imagine broad river valleys depositing sand and gravel, interspersed with muddy floodplains that would dry out in seasons of drought. Even today, the rocks of the Grampians carry echoes of that primeval landscape. Careful eyes can spot ripples and wave patterns preserved in a sandstone as well as polygonal mud cracks etched into red siltstone layers, signs that Silurian mudflats baked under a hot sun long ago. Geologists have even found fossil burrows and feeding trails left by ancient creatures. For example, one peculiar sausage-shaped trace in the rock was created by a worm-like animal around 410 million years ago, as it burrowed through soft sand on a shallow water bottom, leaving behind a telltale feeding groove. Such discoveries let us imagine a world teeming with early life, primitive plants fringing the waterways, arthropods scuttling around tidal flats, and worms boring through wet sand. These subtle clues in the rock, ripples, mud cracks, burrows and more, are like pages from a diary of the Silurian environment that birthed the Grampians. Over time, the loose sand and mud hardened into stone. Buried under thousands of metres of additional sediment, the grains were compressed and gently heated. Groundwater carrying minerals percolated through, cementing the sand grains together. Thus, the accumulations of Silurian sand slowly turned into tough quartzo sandstone, while the muddy layers became siltstone and shale. Little could anyone or anything have foreseen that these placid strata were destined to become soaring mountains. Not long after the Grampians group sediments were laid down, the quiet sedimentary basin was jolted by immense geological forces. The late Silurian to early Devonian was a time of tectonic upheaval in eastern Australia. Plates of the Earth's crust were on the move, and a convergence event was closing in an ocean to the east of Victoria. Over 400 million years ago, along the eastern margin of the ancient supercontinent Gondwana, a slab of oceanic crust slowly slid beneath the continent, a geologic process known as subduction. This distant yet titanic process crumpled and shortened the Earth's crust in what is now Victoria folding rock layers and thrusting the land upward into a towering mountain range. The once horizontal layers of sandstone and shale met a wall of compression coming from the east. In a slow motion clash of continents, the rocks began to crumple like a carpet being squeezed against a wall. This intense episode of mountain building, part of the long-lived Lachlan orogeny, transformed the region. The Grampian sediments were folded and faulted into a massive uplifted belt. Geologists described the result as a thrust and fold belt, meaning the rocks were broken by faults and shoved upward and westward, stacking on top of each other even as they were bent into folds. You can picture the flat layers buckling. Some sediments were pushed nearly upright, while others rode over their neighbours along thrust faults. The harder sandstone beds proved resilient. Many simply flexed into arches and ridges, whereas the weaker shales often fractured and smeared along fault planes. By the end of this upheaval, the Grampians group had been tectonically thickened into a much narrower, thicker pile of rock than it was originally. What had been a broad plain was now the core of a new mountain range, with layers tilted at dramatic angles. It's awe-inspiring to realise that at this time, in the early Devonian period, the Grampians were likely part of a towering mountain chain, formed as part of the assembly of the supercontinent Gondwana. From a human perspective, this uplift was incomprehensibly slow. Rocks creeping at a few millimetres per year, 
yet the forces involved were as titanic as those building the Himalayas today. Huge faults sliced through the crust, some of them cutting right through the Grampian strata. One such fault now lies buried beneath Hall's Gap, others are exposed as shattered zones of rock along the ranges. In places, entire blocks of sandstone were thrust up. Even now you can stand at certain lookouts and clearly see the stratified rocks standing nearly vertical, layer upon layer exposed like the pages of a book turned sideways. The rugged panorama from Baroka Lookout for example, shows how one mountain range can display steeply inclined beds in the foreground, while a neighbouring range behind it has gentler dips, a consequence of different fault blocks taking on different tilts during that ancient uplift. The Wonderland Range and Mount Difficult Range are essentially great upfolded domes of sandstone, whereas along the eastern flank by Hall's Gap, hogback ridges of nearly vertical slabs line up like serrated blades. It's the legacy of that violent reshaping, the Grampians were literally wrenched into existence by the crunch of tectonics. By roughly 410 to 400 million years ago, the main phase of folding and thrusting subsided. The once sedimentary pile had been metamorphosed into crucible of pressure, not enough to turn it to schist or gneiss, but enough to harden it and create slaty cleavages in the shales. The Grampians range now sat as a block of high ground. If one could time travel, you would see freshly formed mountains, their peaks perhaps jagged and raw, composed of tilted sandstone beds still relatively intact and hard, standing above the surrounding terrain. But the story was far from over. Deep underground, another drama was unfolding. As the mountain building waned, the crust beneath the Grampians began to relax and crack, and magma forced its way upward from deep below. In the early Devonian, shortly after the folding, roughly 400 million years ago, blobs of molten rock intruded into the cooler upper crust beneath and around the Grampians. These magmas crystallized slowly underground to form bodies of granite and granodiorite. Notable examples are the Victoria Valley granite and the Mafeking granodiorite at the southern end of the ranges. Although hidden at depth when they formed, bits of these intrusive rocks have since been exposed at the surface, for instance near Mafeking and in the Victoria Valley. The granite intrusions tell a fascinating side story. Because they cooled underground, their crystals had time to grow large, studding the rock with flecks of quartz, feldspar and mica, very different from the fine-grained sandstones around them. Geologists have determined by radiometric dating that these granites solidified roughly 400 million years ago, lining up well with the timing of the post-folding relaxation. In geological terms, they belong to suites of Devonian Age granites common in Victoria. While not large enough to create their own mountains, these granitic bodies have influenced the local landscape. Granite is generally less resistant to erosion than the tough Grampian sandstone so areas underlain by granite have weathered into lower, gentler hills. If you visit the southern Grampians, for example, you'll notice parts of the Victoria Valley have a softer, rolling character, a clue that granite lies beneath, in contrast to the steep ramparts of sandstone in adjacent ranges. It's also worth noting that these magmatic intrusions sometimes brought up minerals from the deep. Small amounts of gold and other minerals were deposited in quartz veins within the granites, in fact, traces of gold were later eroded out and concentrated in stream gravels, even leading to a minor gold rush at Mafeking in the early 20th century. Although gold mining in the Grampians was never on the epic scale of Ballarat or Bendigo, it's intriguing to realise that the fiery origins of granite here had a tangible legacy in human history as well. With the Grampians range built and the granites in place, the region's story entered a new chapter, Endless Ages of Erosion. For hundreds of millions of years, from the Devonian through the rest of the Paleozoic into the Mesozoic era of dinosaurs, and right up to the recent Quaternary, the forces of weathering and erosion have been at work, gradually wearing down the once lofty mountains. The peaks that stood soon after the uplift would have been attacked by rain, rivers, wind and later on even glaciers during cold Permian times around 300 million years ago, southern Gondwana experienced ice ages. The highest elevations would have been planed down and valleys widened. However, erosion never affected all parts of the range equally. The varying hardness of the rock layers played a key role in sculpting the modern topography. The Grampians today owe their dramatic shape to the contrast between tough sandstones and softer layers within the rock sequence. The thick, massive sandstone beds, cemented with quartz, resist breaking down, whereas the thinner beds of shale or siltstone in between tend to crumble and wash away more readily. This difference has created a striking pattern. Ridges and summits correspond to the hard sandstones, while valleys and saddles often mark where the softer rock has eroded out. 
Essentially, nature's carving tools exploited the geological architecture left by the Devonian folding. Over time, what was once a solid but jumbled mass of rock has been refined into the bold relief of alternating ranges and valleys. In most of the Grampians, the sandstone layers are inclined slightly westward, meaning the western slopes of each range are gentler while the eastern faces form abrupt cliffs. Stand on an eastern overlook like the Pinnacle or Barocca and you'll gaze out over sheer drops of hundreds of metres, the cross sections of ancient layers, whereas looking west, the terrain steps down more gradually. In a few places where the beds were turned nearly vertical, such as the northern Mount William Range near Halls Gap, knife-edged hogback ridges appear, with steep slopes on both sides. This intricate relief was further refined by more recent events. For instance, tectonic stability over the last few hundred million years meant no new mountains rose here, but gentle uplifts and tilts of the Australian continent in the Cretaceous and Cenozoic eras helped rivers to continue cutting into the ranges. The climate oscillated. There were times of lush tropics and times of aridity, each leaving its mark. In the last two million years, ice ages caused more vigorous erosion and weathering. Though the ice sheets didn't reach this far north, periglacial processes affected the region. Even today, erosion is active. Every heavy rainfall that funnels down a gully, every summer bushfire that removes protective vegetation, contributes to shaping the Grampians. In 2011, for example, torrential rains caused landslides that dramatically altered some slopes and temporarily closed roads. A reminder that the mountains are still evolving, albeit on a timescale usually too slow for us to notice. Gravity pulls on the steepest cliffs, occasionally prying off giant slabs that crash to the valley floor as rock falls. Scree slopes or piles of broken rock at the base of cliffs throughout the Grampians are evidence of this ongoing natural demolition work. What emerges from these processes is the breathtaking landscape we cherish. Grampians range consists of three main ridges running roughly north-south, each a proud remnant of the ancient fold belt. From west to east they are the Victoria Range, the Serra slash Mount Difficult Range, forming the central and largest spine, though subdivided into segments of local names like Mount Difficult, Wonderland, Mount Victory, Serra, etc., and the Mount William Range to the east. Each of these is built of the same layered sandstones, simply repeated and lifted differently by faults. Among the most notable geological features are the towering sandstone cliffs and escarpments that define the Grampians' look. These cliffs often expose the stratification of the rock in lovely stripes and ledges, for example, the Balconies, or Jaws of Death lookout over the Victoria Valley, sits atop a protruding ledge of resistant sandstone that has been undercut by erosion, creating a natural balcony. The Pinnacle in the Wonderland Range is another famed outcrop, a high viewpoint where you can literally stand on the upturned edge of a sandstone bed and see it projecting out into space. But underlying it all is the geology, the reason the mountains exist to begin with. The rocks of the Grampians have endured hundreds of millions of years of Earth's trials. They were born as sediment in tranquil settings, hardened, then forged by tectonic violence into mountains. They survived deep burial and the intrusion of magma from below. They have been sculpted by uncountable millennia of weather, yet remain standing as steep ridges visible for miles around. As one geology enthusiast aptly put it, what we see now reveals what happened then. Each cliff face and valley is a window into the past. In the Grampians ranges of Victoria, we behold more than just picturesque mountains. We witness a cross-section of deep time. The story of their formation is an epic at the intersection of geology and poetry. Sand grains washed from long-vanished peaks gather to form new land. That land is shattered and lifted skyward by the slow collision of a subduction event. Fire from the Earth's mantle freezes in hidden vaults of granite below. Then wind, water and a gentle hand of time carve the raw mountains into the splendid vistas we treasure today. The rocks here are remarkably ancient, yet the landscape itself is dynamic and ever-changing. Standing on a Grampian summit at sunset, as the sandstone bluffs glow orange and purple, one can't help but feel awe at the immense span of history they represent. Science tells us how the Grampians were made, through sedimentation, tectonic uplift, folding, faulting and erosion, and knowing this deepens our appreciation. These mountains are, in a very real sense, ancient storytellers. They speak of vanished rivers and shallow seas, of monumental collisions in the Earth's crust, and of the patient artistry of erosion. It's a story still being written, a geological symphony of creation and destruction, and one that invites us to marvel at the power and beauty of our ever-changing Earth. 
I hope you found this as interesting as I did, and as always, thanks for watching. Before I end this video, I'd like to give a big shout out to my Patreon and YouTube members. Thank you so much to everyone that helps to support this channel.